Hey, what's up, Ma? How was it? How was your Euro trip? How was, how was your I'm Euro sorry. trip? I'm sorry, I've yet to get back to you via WhatsApp, but let's not talk about my Euro trip as of now because there are 50 other people listening to the <laughs> chat. So we can have our one-on-one -on -one session later on. Yeah. But okay. it was amazing. It was amazing. And here I would like to say on the record that Bartosz Jimianin has to be the best host I've ever met. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Okay, that's all going live. <clears throat> Good marketing. <laughs> <laughs> and Mujtaba, my congratulations. I've heard the news. <laughs> All right, guys, it's uh, 9.36. We have 45 people on board. And um, wow. this is me. This is the guy, um, the horse in the red ATAR. And um, yeah, I, I think it's uh, pretty easy to swap me and not miss me. So I will be the uh, moderator for this session. And joining me will be uh, Rimsha. Rimsha, could you please shake your hand? As you can Hi, see, guys. he's a regular human. <laughs> Just like you guys. <laughs> right, so guys, um, the time is 9.36 and um, just waiting for the last person to join in. We have 46 people live right now. Um, I, I hope I'm audible to everyone. I can see that a lot of you have muted your um, mic, which is fine. We don't want any distractions uh, so far. So let's just start. Um, my name is Umer um, and uh, I represent uh, A-Clan and a for youth um, let me just tell you a bit about um, A-Clan and um, basically A-Clan was uh, established back in 2013 and uh, we um, were basically an amalgamation of university students and young professionals and basically everything cool as you can obviously see. Um, we've got different uh, people working for us. We, we're basically a digital workforce and you may also call us digital nomads which is the popular term you use these days. So what we basically do is a uh, talent curation platform as well, and we work with talented youth, students, um, young professionals. We train them, we give them work opportunities, networking opportunities, and with them, we help small and medium businesses grow their digital persona. Um, and some of the initiatives which we've uh, worked with previously, um, which are our own initiatives, uh, one of them is A for Youth. Rimsha will be going through the A for Youth session uh, introduction shortly. And then another one is Clan Camp. Um, then comes Yellow Root, Gamma Gaming. These are just a few of our initiators which we've launched in the past. And we're, we basically believe in remote working, hence the term digital nomads earlier on. And due to this corona thing going on, I mean, remote working is what the world is now coming to. And by the looks of it, I hope everything goes well. But remote working, this concept is now here to stay. So a little bit more about our company. Um, we, we've also recently um, established in Australia and we're also setting up in USA. So basically um, our domain and our kingdom per se is uh, expanding globally. And now I would like um, Rimsha to uh, briefly tell you guys about A4 Youth, which is the primary um, company which is hosting this session today. Hi guys, I'm Ramsha. First of all, I'm so happy to see all of you guys this year. It's so exciting. Uh, secondly, let's start with A for Youth. Uh, now Omar is back to his original shape. Uh, so talking about A for Youth. Uh, <laughs> so talking about A for Youth. A for Youth is basically a community-based youth organization that empowers youth as well as young professionals to follow their passion, hone their skills, and give them a taste of professional life. We also provide work time opportunities, which are like part-time as well as full-time leadership camp, as Umair mentioned about Grand Camp. 
also each and everything that comes under the umbrella of learning as well as earning because all of us all of us are students and it's all focused on students to you know uh, be independent as well as learn now talking more about the workshop let me give you guys a bit of the rundown about the agenda and what to expect during this workshop uh as you could see the name of this workshop was not like oh this is a photoshop workshop it was more of like oh this is what most des designers don't tell you because this is not a traditional workshop this, this we what we'll be talking about is something that not all designers talk about and that's not something you can learn basically on a youtube channel through a tutorial so we'll be talking more about all the itchy bitchy details about design, about balancing, about principles and elements. While making sure that it's not boring, it's interactive, it's fun, and, and we're all learning something. Also, uh, stay tuned for another workshop that's coming up, which will be more towards web designing because apparently that's a big thing nowadays, and obviously, we're all stuck in quarantine anyway, so let's be productive, I guess. Now, I'll give the mic back to Omer to give you guys a bit of the stats. So, yeah, yeah, my bad. The mask is pretty cool, but honestly, it's very hard to breathe. Hence, I'm sorry if my voice was muffled before. I'm just getting a little air inside my system. Um, so let me just tell you guys a few interesting stats about um, today's uh, session. So um, we got a total of 75 responses. And uh, most of the, the major chunk of people attending this session are students. 72% are university students. Then you've got 13% who are full-time employed, 8% who are doing freelancing, and 5% 5, 5 who are unemployed graduates, like most of us. Um, and uh, when it comes to design knowledge, that's, that's one of the questions which we had in there as well. So, I mean, there's no surprise, most of them rate their uh, designing skills to banana, which is 29%. Um, and then, I mean, to cut, to cut it short, around 5% people say that they're, you know, 5% 5, 5 you can say they're on top. And um, so far, there's uh, no one who says their design level uh, matches Mona Lisa, uh, the original version. So, I mean, that's a pretty interesting start. Side by side, let me also tell you that uh, today we we are joined by a total of 75 people. That's a start which I've repeated. But more, more importantly, people um, who've joined us today, they, they're from India. We've got people from Germany. We've got people from Poland. We've got people from Croatia. We've got people from Sweden. Switzerland, USA, Oman, and Republic of Islamabad. So um, these are the um, countries who have joined us today. Some of these people are already part of our A for Youth uh, program. Some of them, some of these people have come to Pakistan as well. Um, but it's it's uh, we're just happy to see that most of you guys joined in for today's uh, session. And uh, with that, let me just also go through some of the ground rules which we stated earlier. On. For engagement. So like I said, uh, no firearms. If you want to get noticed, the best thing is for you guys to raise your hand. Now Zoom does allow you this functionality. If you um, explore the chat window a bit, you can see it allows you to raise your hand. I mean, even if it's not physical, um, you can still um, really all get a pop-up of uh, your... Uh, <laughs> Can you please turn off your mics? That'll be really nice. Yeah, thank you. Um, and secondly, if you guys don't, can't really figure out the raise hand um, feature, um, you guys can use uh, the chat window, which is on your right. Um, whatever comments you make will be visible by myself, who is the main moderator, and Rinsha, and basically everyone else. So please. Um, um, while this is an open discussion, but we would want that we respect um, our uh, speaker's um, presentation and let's hope that all of this goes smoothly. Whatever questions you guys might have, we will be answering those questions periodically as well. The workshop is designed in such a way that we're having breaks in between. So all of your questions will be answered and towards the end, we will be sharing a feedback form with you. So if you guys have further questions, uh, we will answer those questions sooner or later as well. So we're not going anywhere. Um, so without further ado, um, our, um, let me just introduce you to our speaker. Our speaker is basically a panda. 
um they are pretty rare in china um they don't survive anywhere else um due to corona um these speakers now come to pakistan cuz it's a safer sanctuary and um i think as for the likes and all uh, the panda uh, he or she or it loves uh, noodles um bamboos and of course graphic design um and so i think i need the technicalities of the introduction to the panda excel um and i think with mm-hmm. that uh, panda you are in charge now thank you for a great introduction umair um i think by the sound of me you you guys can tell i'm a she <laughs> but let's just go with you that anyways i am a person uh, i'm a panda and associate level art director at an advertising agency i also do some digital art and i also paint astronauts which my family is telling me not to paint anymore uh i don't know why because, but one must listen to your their brown parents else they're going to lose <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You guys just do you. Somebody's mic is turned on, so please turn that off. There's a lot of distraction. Just sort that out as well. So before I begin, I will set up some more expectations for you guys as this is initially um as this workshop was initially designed to be on ground so you guys could have more tangible experience like we could we could have a back and forth feedback loop and we could see how you guys are perceiving things and if you're being able to deliver what we're trying to deliver but since change of plans corona happened and i think we have a better opportunity now that we have people joined in from all over the world uh from india from uh, from europe and we have people from republic of islam but as uh, umair said hold- i think somebody's mic is still turned on yeah let me just sort it out uh, there's an interesting suggestion by taha he says you can ask people to uh, pin amina's video um state bar's video my bad so that you know that's the only window which you see so okay. uh, just uh, click on the panda yeah. make sure it's the head um and then you know you're going to see a window which says pin it won't physically pin the panda just thought i'd let you guys know um, but it's going to um get the window right in front of you so that's that's probably going to help as well So for this workshop um I I believe we are here from like various bag, uh, backgrounds uh we are here like uh, there are so many designers here there are freelancers here there are marketers here so I I believe I personally believe that this um session is going to help each and every one out to understand and perceive things differently things that we see on daily basis um when uh, i'm sure that um designers ha- already know designers already know uh, the ground rules for uh, a princip- the ground rules of principles and basics of art and design but it's going to be a refresher for them as well as it was for me um but for everybody else it's going to be a guiding tool uh, to develop a visual vocabulary and everybody will be able to perceive things very differently this will also help uh the people from who are going to start their own startups or entrepreneurs uh whenever they go ask to their desi- uh, uh, to their designer friend ask them to design a logo so they will also have a better understanding that which is a good design and which is a bad design and their designer friends might not dodge them or give them like anything a uh, run of the milk or a uh, mill or anything which is a rip off or maybe you are that um design or maybe uh, your designer friend keeps designing a thing for you but you never start your um uh, startup so and one of the reason could be because you have no knowledge no basic knowledge of what you actually want from that designer or your friend or maybe 
you are not paying them well. Any, anyway, um, the thing is, why we are going to go into the basics of design or basic elements of design because everybody, like Ramsha said, everybody tells you to um, how to use a uh, how to use a certain tool, Photoshop. It may be Photoshop, or you can go to YouTube and get so many tutorials there. You can find them, but there are hardly people who will tell you to go into the basics, basics, do your research, uh, find out what exactly, what exactly forms a good design or uh, design or any form of visual or communication. So I think we should start with the presentation now and uh, um, we'll be taking your questions and suggestions uh, while I'm doing that. So should I start sharing my screen, Amir? Please, Panda, <clears throat> you may go ahead. Okay. Permission granted. Thank you. Okay, let me just get to, should I turn off my video? That is your, that is your call. Wait a second, how do I share my screen? This is how. Can you guys see all of my screen? Yes, affirmative, I can. So I'm sure everyone else can as well. If someone has any issues, they could raise it in the chat. Can you ask everybody? Yes. If I can see. I think they'll just let me know if they don't. I think you can proceed. Okay. So we'll start off with the elements. Elements are the tools a designer or artist uses to craft anything, um, be it a visual, be it a painting, be it um, a UI design or anything that is informal visual, be it a photograph. Um, what are elements? Elements, I'm going to use this analogy throughout the session, that elements are some, things like ingredients we use for to cook our meal. Uh, it's up to us how we cook our meal. If we have all the ingredients right, but we still might end up screwing up our dish or meal or whatever we're cooking, that's because we're not following the principles. Principles will come to later, but for now we're going to discuss the elements, the things that form up a design or a visual. And firstly, I will talk about why design, why not, why we're talking about design and not any other form of art or photography or anything else because design is a solution oriented visual or communication design is to solve someone's problem and art a piece of art is it is an expression of someone but uh, when it comes to design be it a form of user interface be it a website it is uh, made or designed in a way to solve someone's uh, problem right uh, it is either to sell a service or a product or, you know, there are so many marketing campaigns um, which involve advertising and design to uh, solve people, people's problems. So let's just get into the elements. Yes, this looks like a boring slide. Um, so we're going to move to another boring slide, which is line. <laughs> Um, so the first element or elements, um, I would say, are line, point, and plane. Everything starts with a point, and then point form a plane, uh, point form a line, and then line uh, all together form a plane. These are the building blocks of design from these elements. Um, designers create images, icons, texture, patterns, diagrams, animation, typographic uh, system, like everything is created from these three things. The point, yes, well, you guys are looking at the right image. If you guys look at a point as in, in term of a dot or a full stop, that's not just it. 
point is anything uh, that gets your focus or it starts your or it builds your focus and takes it somewhere else so next time you look at puckered lips it means it's a point it's not puckered lips right okay line yes um, again, a boring slide, but it's very important. Uh, it's infinite series of points, lines, describe structure and edges, type like the text or alphabet, fit on a line. So everything um, is basically formed with a line. Uh, when we were in our um, foundational year in universities, our teachers would tell us to work on our line quality. Why is that? Because a line can define a person's uh, personality or behavior. Um, I used to have a very shaky or distorted line, and uh, so I had to work a lot to make it fine line with its ebbs and flows. So lines can, um, can be smooth, rough, continuous, broken, thin, thick. It defines a uh, texture for it, it defines texture or communication of, and a personality of your communication or any visual form. For instance, a diagonal line would uh, represent speed. So we're going to get into the detail of it. You guys will know what I'm saying. And lines are everywhere around us. So here are a few examples. You can see lines, if you guys have not been uh, if you guys have not been seeing lines like this before, now you guys will start to see lines like this before around you. Um, they're everywhere. Line is design. So this is a poster of film The Great Gatsby, and it's film. It's talking about times of 1920s, I guess, and the, uh, this art style is art deco if you guys know it already please let me know if you guys know the up uh, so the style is like using geometrical uh, shapes and lines uh, against the dark uh, background um, but the shapes and lines are in form of like they're primarily in lighter color or in gold if you guys can think of any other art style which uses lines please let us know let me know in comments if you got, if you guys have anything else in mind other than Art Deco style. So here's a really cute one. Um, McDonald's is representing their fries in form of lines. Um, it's really adorable, and you can see how twists and turns um, a line is making uh, you understand how uh, it's communicating the fries and, okay, it's not making sense. Just like, just how uh, when your Google map lady tells you head northwest, you don't get it. I guess that's how it's not making sense right now, but you guys get it. They're using French fries yeah. to represent. To navigate, <laughs> basically. Yeah. They're using French fries to navigate you. Thank you, Omer. <laughs> okay, so this is another boring and plain um, slide. Plain is something um, when lines um, in, um, closes, it becomes a shape. And uh, a plane is a 2D shape. And what happens when we give depth or use different colors with a shape, uh, it becomes um, it becomes a form. It becomes 3D, like it is here. You, you guys can see. I would also wa want to know if people can see these slides, right? Or if they have any questions, they can type in. So shapes are planes with edges. So in these examples, you can see uh, we have shapes and they're forming a collective 
image visual. They're also in form of uh, 3D uh, and have a little depth to them as well. Brain can be described with lines or fields of a second. Fields of color. Yeah. Is my screen glitching? Is no, it's not. Screen? It's 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 working. No, fine, it's I perfect. Guess. Yeah. Okay. So these letter forms describe spatial planes. When uh, when you have a plane and you skew it, when you have a shape, basic planes are shapes. <clears throat> and when you skew your shape uh, and give it a different color to its side, it becomes um, a form, which I've already said, and it's also called a spatial plane. Spatial means uh, something which is in space, which you can visually see or which uh, you feel is popping out or is 3D. I hope I made it clear to you. And now we're going to move to texture. So texture is um, one of my favorite element. It is a tact tactile grain of surface and substances. Texture is something you can either feel with your hand or you can feel with your um, eye. It's, it's either smooth, it's either rugged, it's either grainy, creamy. Um, Texture is actually something uh, many advertisers use in their ads because <clears throat> it has a very intrinsic um, property to, you know, entice and evoke um, feeling uh, in, in their users or, or people because, okay, I want you guys to read this um, code. If, if you, touch something, it's likely someone will feel it. If you feel something, it's likely someone will be touched. So this is what texture does to you. You actually want to, you know, get hold of the thing which is in front of you. So like I said, advertisers use texture, a lot of it to uh, create a feeling of sensuality or toughness or evoke emotion in their users. For Levi's, they use very um, rugged or uh, young textures, of, or which shows that their product is very tough. It is very, uh, you know, rugged. It's like, it's hard and uh, they're, yeah. And it's very useful, so it's tough. And same way, um, makeup uh, products show their ads in a way uh, so that you know how people feel that makeup product, uh, how would uh, people feel it on their skin? So it's either creamy, it's milky, it's grainy. Uh, some, whenever you see an, a makeup ad, you would likely to buy one which shows the texture in it. On food, food is um, something that has to have texture in it besides makeup. Because uh, when you see those um, water bubbles and, and uh, on a Coke bottle, you want to have hold of it in the hot, uh, scorching sun. And uh, with burgers and pizzas, I hope people are not getting hungry now. I, I am, so and I think I that's pretty unfair on your hungry. part because <laughs> you're showing us Coke bottles and now you're showing us Burger King and, you know, this is... Um, yeah, that's what advertising... That's true. <laughs> you might be a vegan yourself, Panda, but we're not. So um, this is just... Uh... Exactly. <laughs> yeah, well, eating animals are not a good idea. Oh, I'm an animal. Mm. That's that's the topic of our next workshop. <laughs> yeah, <probably. laughs> we'll do this session uh, 
who's who's the vegan out uh, like the other day pewdie i watched a video of pewdiepie he was um doing this um, review on video which had like all the vegan people in it and people had to point, uh, take out the one who was not vegan in them so it was pretty funny you guys should watch it after the session <laughs> for sure for sure well in this chat i think yeah. you're probably the only one who's a vegan and we're all pretty hungry so i think let's just move on to the next I slide to the to the next slide yes uh, absolutely well, i want to make sure that here uh, uh, like the advertisers or designers have used uh, smoke texture fire texture food texture grainy texture and we have coke at the back which has ice in it so you get the idea of it moving to uh, color color changes the entire mood it uh, evokes emotion it can codify information you know um, something color actually um, color would be like an entirely different workshop because it is very in-depth and very detailed uh, there are you know we can do that workshop some other time but for now, we're just going to get you through that, how, why it's uh, an important element of design or art or any form of visual art. So you see, it changes your entire mood. It either evokes emotion for red, red, um, wants, uh, red makes you take an action, yellow is a happy color, and then we have uh, blues, blues, uh, blues are for like royalty and no, blues are not for royalty. Blue, uh, that purple is for royalty. Blue is for sophistication and oh, you can see like dairy uh, products uh, use white, whites and greens and blues why because it's like more towards the organic uh, aspect of. Are we getting messages? Uh, organ, uh, organic aspect of the dairy, oh, like the cows that were pasturing on the fields in Switzerland and then they produce uh, those dairy products with it, so you know, uh, rainbows and sunshine. Yeah. With <clears throat> and oh, I'm, I have this example of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. It, it has a tints and shades of purple in it because purple shows mystery and it shows uh, royalty as well, but here it shows mystery. And uh, you know, uh, yeah, again, yellow is a happy color and M&Ms are so colorful because they're primarily for children, but I like it too, although I'm vegan, but sometimes I nibble on M&Ms. And yeah, I think it's uh, then, safe to say quite a lot of people like M&Ms and Skittles. Before we found out yeah, Skittles yeah. are probably not safe for consumption, but okay. Really? <laughs> are they not? I haven't had them in a long time. But yeah, uh, okay, for like you've seen in um, these products for women have different colors and the products for men have different colors. For, for instance, uh, Perfumes for women have like pastel colors to show sensuality and delicacy, while men uh, show uh, depict are depicted by colors which are as fiery, uh, dark, um, grayish, and sophisticated. So you know you get to see patriarchy. <laughs> no, not patriarchy, but okay. Well, I'll say divine masculinity. Um, so moving mm. on to the next. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was good. I love it. <laughs> um, so color psychology is like very in-depth um, uh, session. We can have it held some other time. Uh, you can see how every color represents something different and how colors are a complementary color. One color can have a complementary color and they can have analogous color, primary color, tertiary colors, a secondary colors, put complementary colors. So it's like a very in-depth, we can have it. If you guys are interested, you guys can vote for that. Now moving to a very important 
uh, element of design, which is type or typography. Oh, Panda, I'm sorry, be... I'm cutting you off. Let's just ask people if they have any questions because it's already been like 30 minutes. So if anyone has any questions really? wow. of the content yeah. before that, um, we can just uh, sort those out. So there was um, one question by... There Emma was one Pistes. question. Yes, he said, repeat the plain phase, please. Um, so um, could you mention, uh, could you briefly talk about the plain element <laughs> as well? Okay, so plain can either be your canvas or plain is something when line um, closes, it becomes a plane or a shape. So what, we're using um, the term plane here because it's, it's more mathematical and it's more basic. Plane can be your canvas. And you know, it's, it's a little technical uh, term, uh, a, a little technical to understand, but um, I'm trying my best to make it understandable. Uh, when you sh uh, have a shape, which is basically a plane, and you give it some depth with color or with, <clears throat> or uh, if you skew it, if you, uh, like it's been skewed in here, uh, basically all your text is also plain. Everything which makes a form, a shape, or is enclosed, uh, is it enclosed line, it's a plane, it forms a plane. All your uh, typography, all your shapes, everything that you use, which is bold and which forms any shape, be it an amoeba shape, it's a plane. But when you give it uh, a shadow, let's say a shadow, uh, how do you give uh, something a shadow? You you would shape. And then, for example, this is my hand, it's a plane. And then if I skew my hand like this, so it becomes 3D. So once you skew something, it becomes a form, a 3D form. Uh, was I clear? Yeah, I think that makes sense. <clears throat> that makes sense. And I think uh, we don't have any more questions, so we can, yes, Ahmed Raza is satisfied with the answer. Thank you, Ahmed. Uh, we can move on to... Um, okay. We were at type, right? Typography, well, typography can, um, it could be a visual, a striking visual element, or it could be a shape, or it could be a direct message. You know, it doesn't, uh, your artwork uh, doesn't have to have anything else on uh, the canvas or on it. Uh, it could only be text, but make sure that the text is very um, quirky or it doesn't need any supporting element on it, uh, with it, right? So how uh, typography, uh, just how we can see typography around us, it's everywhere, basically, it's everywhere. Um, a mode of conveying message. I should have included Urdu text in it here as well for people to, you know, to localize it more, but let's just stick to it for now. I hope um, you guys will get from these examples what I was saying, uh, your, uh, your ad, your design doesn't necessarily need to have a full uh, any supporting element with it, on it, if your uh, typography or your text or your content is strong enough. So with the Citibank's um, uh, ad, you can see it doesn't need anything else because the code itself is very powerful. Uh, and with this, the Rift uh, poster, you see how it's opening up a window or a door and they've used typography as an element as a shape in it and the light coming from the eye in it. And here they've used it in form of a silhouette uh, where you can read what it says, but it doesn't have A written in white in it. it they've used uh, an A instead of, uh, in, in, in the background and in form of a silhouette instead, right? So 
the fifth and the final uh, element of design that I'm bringing to you is framing. Framing is very important. Everything you put, uh, uh, you, whatever you're thinking of designing something, you put it in a frame. And frames are everywhere around us. Frames could be your windows, your door, your cupboard, your mirror, even your phone is a frame. And you see, you look into an, on the other side of the world through your frame. So in terms of design, this is how framing is around us everywhere in form of arches, in form of windows, like I said. Uh, but in form of design, you use framing to balance out your text or your visual um, or any element, any other element that you want to use in um, uh, in, uh, in the element. Sorry, let me uh, collect my thoughts. Yeah, so you can use anything that you want to put your emphasis on in your frame or outside of your frame. For instance, they have used the imagery in the frame and uh, they've used a big logo outside of it. And, but here they have used it in a negative space, like in a white space, you can uh, see, everybody can get me because it says my internet stable, is unstable. Are you guys I mean, getting me? I can hear you in, uh, it's, it's pretty audible still, at least for me. Um, the, um, your, yeah. uh, the speed of your yeah. audio is a little fast at times, but I think clearly it's, it's, it's workable for now. Okay. So here you can see um, there's a bottle forming. This is how they've used. It's also called the ground uh, and the, this technique is called something I cannot remember or recall it if anyone can. Any photographers can please let me know. These look like gang signs to me, but that doesn't necessarily talk about my background, but I'm just saying. Are you sure about you that, Amanda? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, figure no, I mean, ground. I don't so, think... Sorry, I... Okay, please. Figure go ground. On. It's called figure ground. Uh, yeah. element. like you take out a negative space out of uh, which a negative space forms a shape or image or um, yeah, basically shape and image. Yeah. So I'll yeah. move to the next frame. And here the framing has been used in a way that they have compartmentalized. Uh, the visual part of the image part or and the textual part of the poster, right? So we are done with the elements. We are now going to move on with the principle. Should we take a break or should we ask questions? Yes, I think there's the, <clears throat> I've got two questions compiled. Um, one of them is by Hassan and it's a pretty long question, man. So I'm going to try my best to read it out. Um, so Panda, are you ready? Uh, so, okay. it's, it's a trick question. It's not a trick question. I think it's a, it's a fairly <laughs> decent sized question. So, I mean, Hassan <laughs> says, do all of these elements combine to define a persona? or is the persona defined independently? That's the first part of the question. Uh, I want to know what the, uh, does he mean when he says persona? Is, does he mean like a visual, an ad, or any form of design? Right, so let me just repeat it's the yes. question because I figured it's a long question. So do all of these elements combine to define a persona or is persona defined independently? And all of these elements then combine to complement a persona instead? That's a, a I very... Think let's take, I, yeah, let's take this technical question yeah, towards the end of I the session. I oh, no, let's just take this towards the end of the session then. Let me just save this question. Okay. 
Okay. And the second question is, um, for each respective element, how do you evaluate the extent of using a certain feature? Okay, that's, that is uh, why we're coming to principle. And uh, I think uh, the persona question also had to do with the principles because principles tell you how, uh, how much amount of uh, a certain ingredient you're going to use uh, and how you're going to use it. Or if, if you need one element or another element, or if you want to combine two elements or three elements, or if you want to use all of the elements in a design, that's where principles come in and they tell you how you're going to use them. Got it, I think that makes sense. Um, and then there's a question by Mustafa Asif, which I'm completely going to skip. Um, I think you can move on to principles okay. now. Okay. okay, so the principles, like I said, uh, are the ingredients and you need to know how much flame you want to keep on and how much salt you want to put in and if you have to use, if you, if you should use, um, Onions in your karahi, like the karahi we use, like chicken karahi, we don't use onion in them. So if you have to use onions in them or not, uh, this this is where principles come in. Should we move? Um, yes. Move ahead. Okay. Yeah. So this I already mentioned that design has to have a purpose. Why does it keep telling my that my internet connection is unstable? Wait a second, let me turn it off. It's probably your influence, my. nothing more. Thank you for. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, at least I can see. Thank you it for the flattery, but I don't think I'm as influential <laughs> as it seems. I'm just a regular <laughs> person like everybody here. Very humble. Okay. Humbling Good. myself. <laughs> Humble Panda. Okay. Um, so about principles, uh, if you go online and search how many principles there are there from about five to 10 or a dozen principles out there, uh, and they're called different things, but uh, they mean the same thing. So what I've concluded is uh, I've conjoined the things which sound similar and which mean the same thing. Uh, into one thing and I've concluded it to like seven basic and fundamental principles. So first of all, it's the balance. Uh, without balance, your audience will feel as if their eye is sliding off the page as I'm sure everybody's eyes, eyes are sliding off this page to the right of the um, canvas because it's not balanced at all. Um, that is what I did here on purpose. Um, so balance are of two types and each and every design has to have a balance. Um, there are certain um, principles which may not be included, uh, which may not be uh, like the key for every design or every visual element, but balance is one of the elements which has to be there. So for symmetrical balance, design, um, lay, uh, the symmetrical designs uh, lay out like elements of equal weight on each side. Like it has to be in perfect balance. If you had to dissect it from center, your eye, uh, it would be like equal on both sides, left or right. So here are a few examples in photography. You can see which are like absolute symmetrical examples. And for design, these are like the absolute symmetrical design. Now coming to asymmetrical balance, it uses elements of different, differing ways often laid out in relation to a line that is not centered uh, within the overall design. It, it doesn't have to be a central aligned design, but with shapes and colors, you balance out the, your design you put a red block over here at the top left corner of your canvas, 
but you will have to balance it out with uh, a, a chunk of text over uh, here at the bottom right corner of your design. Uh, I hope you guys get it. Um, so, you know, it's like, what is the sign? I didn't have it before. That's guys, do you see any the line on my screen? Yeah, I do. It's gone now. It's messing with the asymmetrical balance of your slide. Yeah, it did. I mean, it's pretty it square for me. me. Yeah. Pretty square for me. Okay, great. So here's, um, you can either get an asymmetrical angled bob or uh, here are a few examples you can see. Um, this picture of cups, you can see like there's a red cup over there because red is a very dominating color and that's why Omer is wearing it today. <laughs> but uh, on, the, on the left side of the same picture, uh, we have four cups, but there are different colors uh, and they're stacked up. But still, the visual is pretty much balanced because um, dominating color and stacked up um, cups, they visually balance, each, uh, uh, balance out the whole visual. So your eye is not inclined towards one end or the other. It's, uh, it's revolving. Same goes with the Van Gogh starry eye. You know, there's a bright lit up moon over there uh, at the top right corner, and there's a wave of leafy texture going upward and climbing up. And then there's a breezy texture impression of strokes of brushes uh, uh, sliding towards the right, which makes it um, flowy and which gives it a balance, which keeps your eye revolving to the whole canvas, you know, it's not stuck to one point. Yeah, that's a very interesting image. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's worth quite a lot, Van Gogh, of course. There's a lot of, uh, I, I think I'm surprised to hear that they, it's not just a, a normal painting. Once you actually delve deep into it, you find out there's a whole lot going on. And I think that's, that makes yes, it pretty good. There is, and it's, uh, yeah, there is like, that's, another discussion and debate, but I'm using it as an example here, just as an example, so that okay. everybody can get it. So moving on to the designs, uh, which are asymmetrical, like I said, there's a whole lot of movement, there's text uh, placed out, um, rightly, there's a logo balancing, uh, the text no limits to the music at the top uh, bottom at the bottom left corner and the logo at the top right corner and there's a flowing uh, image and uh, on the other side there's an image to the left side but the visual is is absolutely balanced out your eye is not stuck on one point or it's not um, inclined to any specific side of the um, layout. There are a few more examples, you know, which are not central line, which are moving, which are um, in flow, which are absolutely balanced. If you guys are getting it, please let me know. Or if you guys have any questions also, type that in. No question so far. I think these images are pretty, there's a whole no, lot going on. Looking. <laughs> well, yeah, definitely. I hope you guys are getting uh, the idea from the images and not just looking at them. If anyone has any Predominant. questions, you guys can definitely pop up. So the second principle is dominance, or um, some would call it emphasis. Emphasis, yeah. So dominance or emphasis makes something stand out. It can either be your text, it can either be a color, it can either be the information that you want 
people to read out at first. So let's move with the pictorial dominance first. You guys can see what's dominating. Can you guys tell me what's dominating in the third picture? Like the orange one. I think I it's like the strawberry and vanilla donut. It's, I was talking about the third picture, like the orange one. Oh, well, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> so they it could still be the donut, something. though. Okay, someone says it's, it's the lady. Donut. Someone says it's it's the face. Someone says it's the girl. Someone says it's the girl. The girl hurts herself. The depth of her eyes. Because of the orange color. The lie you couldn't type in. <laughs> okay, Mustafa says it's the orange color. Um, now also it's agrees it's the, the girl. color. It's the girl. I think Interesting. It's so Michelle was me. correct. It's Maria Mayaz was correct. And um, yeah. Okay, like it's also depends on the perception, but I think what they want to stand out is the girl. Because it's in the center yeah. of the image and it's covered by the orange color all around. And what is standing out in the first image? What is dominating factor? Hmm. I think it depends on your personality. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> it's pretty clear because so okay, Maria uh -huh. is saying after. If we do, I think. I think okay, everyone is everyone saying after. Yes, because the color yellow has the most vibrant frequency. Uh, we could do that in the color theory workshop. So yes, yellow. Why do we have yellow sign boards? Because they catch your eyes from like very far away, and yellow is also. Uh, thought to be a very dangerous color in advertising because, you know, you do not want to make your billboard yellow neon flashy because, you know, it could cause accidents. Really? So you mean you, yeah. it distracts you quite a lot? Yeah, it does. It does. It's a very powerful color. So here are a few examples of dominance where your it, it, like I said, dominance could be in your message. It could be like this the this ad in the middle says, this is not for you. So th that is what you read at first. And then That's actually pretty on, rude. I mean, is there a correlation between rudeness and dominance in design? <clears throat> or uh, is it just me? Um, it's just it's a thing because dom dominance play a very important role in design. You know, you want to make your message stand out and you want to make it clear to people and communicate better. Exactly. So like in these ones, like, can anybody tell me what's dominating in this, in uh, the series of poster? Other than the fact that it, they look like Omer today. Yeah, I think that's <coughs> blood in the first image. <laughs> Too red. <laughs> okay, Emma Rosa says it's <laughs> that's women blood. Product. <clears throat> women product. Okay. Do we have more answers? Um, Nawal says Waiting. it's white text. Could be white text. What Farah do you say? says it's the typography. Um, Nikhil also says it's the typography. Mariam says it's the product. <clears throat> the heck I think Nikhil and Nawaz and the other guy who said it's the typography, they're right because oh, it wow, instantly Mr. catches the word men. When you see the product down there, and they're all uh, for women, uh, but then you read men. So that's the yeah. dominating correlation. You know, men are already like, I don't want to say. Men, men are already. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> That's all okay. jokes. That's all jokes. Yeah, you don't expect a panda to say such things, but okay. <laughs> this is why I love I'm pandas. I'm just a boy. This is why everyone loves pandas. 
Yeah, thank you guys. <laughs> thank you everyone who lost pandas. Okay, so I'm gonna move to the next uh, principle, which is movement and rhythm. It makes your eye eyelid move from one place to another, technically when telling a story. Are people giving more answers? Uh, no. They're okay. actually siding with you. Oh, no, we do have a question. Um, okay, I think we'll take this question towards the end. Yeah. Is it another? Is it another? Yeah, because everyone's praising you, so I think the... <laughs> So we'll take this towards Yeah, here. basically everyone loves you. That's that. <laughs> wow. I have an audience already. Yeah, definitely. Nice. Okay, great. Are they praising me? Because I said uh, discriminating stuff uh, for, for men. No. <laughs> so they're Obviously. <laughs> no, they're Obviously. I'm a person and sorry. I have a... I have nothing against anybody. That that's all jokes. Good to know. Good to know. Okay, so movement. Like I said, movement uh, makes your eye move from one thing to another. Uh, yeah. Most importantly, from the thing you want to be uh, read first or seen first to the thing you want to be seen last. So here are a few pictorial examples of movement. Um, it also tells like there's things going on and it's not a static image or a visual or a picture. There's something happening, there's some life to it. So as you can see, there's a sculpture in the middle, which is a very moving sculpture. You can tell if it's the dancing person or if it's the waterfall or it's like, a marshmallow <laughs> and in the third image you can say um, you can see uh, someone uh, dressing the salad with flowers oh my god why would someone dress up a salad with flowers can anybody give me an answer to that <clears throat> so moving towards um, design representation of movement you can see in this bank these bank here ads um there's a lot of movement going on your your eyes are uh, connecting dots and your eyes are moving in a rhythm then this in this ad you can see like ketchup being uh, pulled out of the canvas by onion rings it's pretty nice um and, and really you know and yeah, thank you. Yeah, I didn't make them. <laughs> I didn't make them. <laughs> Some person made them. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and, and you can see the iconic book, um, Smashable. It's called the Smashable. Uh, the wavelength, or uh, I don't know what, other, what else you can call it. Sorry, what's in, this called? Uh, it's a smashable, like smashables are the things which a brand uses uh, to represent, um, these are the elements or shapes of some brands use to, uh, like for example, if, if you see a Nescafe mug, Nescafe mug yeah. uses hub, a circular thing, which instantly tells you that this ad is for Nescafe, or they use this leafy sign, um, which is for smoke, yeah. and, but it's also for a Nescafe. For instance, um, Nestle does uh, has this smashable, which is a paper uh, pee or paper pee coming off. You know, you can instantly tell that it's a Nestle ad. So smashables are yeah. uh, uh, elements or things that different brands, like big brands, use to register themselves. Uh, in one way or another, instead of their logos. Probably, I think Coke is the the company which does it so well. Because I was reading this stat where you know, um, Coke is that one word which is recognizable all across the world, regardless of language or whatever. Wherever you go, if you say use the word Coke or Coca Cola, people would understand uh, exactly. what you want or what you're trying to say. And exactly. I think that's brilliance on the brand's part. 
um because you know they don't yeah, necessarily exactly. need to have ads to sell their product because they're everywhere but exactly. I mean, for them to be able to penetrate the entire world you know different exactly. literacy levels languages whatever they're still able to um pull their message across it's just brilliant yeah and also the thing with coke is which is not so anymore uh coke used to use uh, normal regular people with um uh candid shots for their adverts but uh, now that they started using uh them uh, like celebrities in ads here in Pakistan but uh, i i haven't done much research how it's been done worldwide but they would use normal regular people like us in their ads uh, why on the other hand Pepsi would be we're not uh, regular people just in celebrities especially with our masks but <laughs> i i still understand the vibe of it <laughs> okay well Plus, um, I also um, I just realized I think I'm also um, sponsored by Coke over here, and I don't even know. So it's red, white, and red. <laughs> you you are <laughs> representing a lot of brands <laughs> today. You I I just realized that I've used so many red and white um, examples. Exactly. Like there was L'Oreal one, and there's coming uh, there are coming of uh, of. Uh, examples like they're from like target store so you are you're like a brand ambassador for this presentation you can say <laughs> i'll take that let's okay, let's move on so what were we talking about we were talking about movement yeah <laughs> a movement like um Uh, sports uh, sports ads like Nike or Olympic uh, Olympic ads would be using movement a lot. You will see a lot of movement in their ads because uh, it shows speed. Um, you get it. You, by the look of it, you understand that this is a sport ad. If you do not even or even uh, energy drink ads, they have a lot of movement in them. Or if you're an artist or if you just want to create stuff, you could. even create something like which is in the middle of the which is like the cent, uh, the, the second layout <coughs> yeah 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 which also has movement so now we're coming to repetition or pattern okay repetition and pattern is something which is not necessarily uh, which does not need to have uh, is one principle that you may follow or you may not follow it's up to you because it's something um like it's that one ingredient you want to use uh, no it's not an ingredient it's a principle sorry i'll take that back let's move further it's it's it actually reinforces an idea and the reputation like how i see reputation is like uh how different brands use one thing over and over and over again to register it in their clients i uh, uh, in their audience or target market minds to you know um so that they know exactly what this product or brand is here's a visual form of um repetition or pattern you might see around us here comes umair and here comes his brand target to target <laughs> yes another is, is another um is a uh, 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 just like walmart it's a everything everything store yeah there's you kind know, of like metro everything. in pakistan probably yeah so they used it so they have created pattern using their um logo their logo is like um uh, how the thing bullseye. that you put your dart on yes. Yes. bullseye bullseye yes probably i think people would understand bullseye yeah that's target yeah bullseye. the dart pad that you have mm-hmm. it's like yep. they've made it look like that the bullseye so they, that's how their logo looks like and they've used it 
use the elements of their logo to create different patterns while um, putting in their products as well. Like with this, like it's everything store, so you can get everything at. Um, yeah, moving on to proportion. Okay, proportion is like very important. Uh, if you're using a product or um, in your ads, or if you're using a person next to another person, proportion tells you uh, how these two things relate to each other. For instance, in most of the ads, let's just move to the next slide. For in instance, like in these uh, visuals, you can see the size of an apple compared to the size of the person in the back. And in the first visual, you can see the size of those little, what are they? Cookies? Uh, I don't know, bake street, something. Dumplings at the back. And um, dumplings. Look like non Compared to the size of the hand. You know, you can create. <laughs> Yeah, look at that. Mel is definitely nice. hungry right now. Mel is definitely nice. hungry right now. Being really really honest, you know. Yeah, but you know, I might be wrong, but still, that's definitely dumplings yeah. at the back. Why are the Chinese people yeah, so eating lamb satay? What even? Why? Okay, yeah, moving on to the people are saying dumplings, but we're talking yeah. about the uh, the the thing in the center. The uh, which is slightly uh, brownish from on top looks like non okay, to let's me. Let's just move ahead. <laughs> yes, so these visuals are going yeah. to tell you what proportion actually means. Like the first visual by Fia tells you um, the size, the actual size of the car uh, in relation to a person. Um, against it, like in front of it. Mm -hmm. You can tell what the actual size of the car would be if you go by it. Yeah. But in the second visual, you cannot tell if it's a car or if it's a toy, right? So this is where proportion comes in and it tricks, it tricks people like uh, so many food chains trick us. The issue was like big chunky burger, but um, if we have nothing to relate it with, if we don't have any other, if we don't have a human figure, or if you don't have anything uh, life size or a, a scale with it to compare it with, we would never know its actual size. Like this burger by Old McDonald's, you cannot tell what its actual size, while this uh, chicken leg, you can tell it's pretty big. Are people hungry now? Yeah, yeah. Definitely. So this burger might actually be like this big. I don't know. It won't be as big as it looks here. Yeah. So I think I made it pretty clear about what um, proportion is. Moving next to space or negative space. Well, uh, space or negative space allows uh, for uh, allows uh, your design to breathe. It's also called white space. It's the area. It also forms a contrast. Like this mask of mine is forming a contrast. Like there's white and then there's black. Uh, with this white, you can see the black. So. The, uh, for negative space or white space, you can see a shape or um, a shape or may, maybe you, you don't have to use it subliminally. I'm going to move to the example so that you guys get a better idea. For instance, in these visuals, um, there's a lot of white space in the first image, which is a photograph of, of beautiful pancakes. Um, you know, it allows a breathing space. It doesn't, it's not playing any trick on your eye. It doesn't have anything subliminal in it. It's just a picture uh, of, to create a contrast or to pop out your, um, your breakfast uh, and the woody table against the white. And in the second visual, 
it's not white, but it's a negative space. It doesn't necessarily have to be white. It has to be negative space. It has to be forming uh, some sort of um, visual or shape or t a type or anything. Like in third uh, visual, you see it's forming the silhouette uh, frame for the person on the other to uh, look more dramatic and look more, um, you know, it's the fashion photography because they can, they just use it to make it look more dramatic. So I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, Sorry, yeah. I'm cutting you off from the previous slide. Do you think um, the um, this particular um, space is directly linked to today's concept of minimalism? Because that's what you hear every every now and then. You know, people are believing in minimalistic um, yeah. uh, designs. Okay. So yeah, I mean, I see a lot of white in there that gives a lot of uh, room for you to, I mean, play minimally. So do you think space uh, is directly linked to uh, minimalism? Well, actually it's a very good idea, but there are three ways or four ways or like different ways you can use your white space. First, either to create something which is subliminally, a subliminal uh, to form a shape, or you can use it minimally to, you know, then comes the domin dominance uh factor in, in your you know uh, whole design so if you want to put emphasis on one thing and keep the rest white or keep it minimal or give it some other color then yes it would be minimal that you're keeping it not you're not keeping it heavy yes Makes it would sense. be a minimalistic design um there you can also search on google um with minimal design, minimal movie posters. You should go search minimal movie posters. You, you will see how they've designed uh, a full uh, heavy movie poster and they've turned it into a very minimal sh uh, posters with shapes and little texture or the element they've extracted from the movies. Um, and yes, they use a lot of negative space for them and yet convey the message. You get the idea which movie it, it is instantly. So yes, minim you can use this certain principle for minimalism as well. But uh, what, my, uh, what I'm trying to convey here is that you use white space to make your design look very breathable. I'm going to, can you guys still see my, uh, can you guys see my screen? I'm going to share some bad designs so you guys get an idea why you need um, white space. Can you guys see my screen? We can, yes. I can honestly see a white line. Probably a centimeter what? thick. Can you, you guys cannot see my screen? No, Kunta, I can't. what do you see? Yeah, no. I can see it now. See this you is your presentation. Uh, do you see this uh, disaster no, of a design? No, we can just see your um, no. your presentation. The presentation. And before that, we could yeah, only see it. a white horizontal line. Oh, I think I'm just sharing my yeah I'm probably it's the zoom desktop. it's the zoom screen which oh, is being no, shared i'm not sharing my desktop so i'm going yeah now you guys can see right yes we can see it now yeah oh, yeah wow. so you know this is why you need breathing space and all your designs yeah. it looks like a menu of a typical a lot restaurant going on. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it is. More than uh, no, it's not, you can see the number yeah. at the bottom, so I don't think it's a Pakistani. Mm. Like, we have brilliant designers all over the world. Yeah. Like, then there's this one. It's also not Pakistani. People don't yeah. no, Pakistani it makes either. This one's from London. <laughs> and then we have designs oh, like yeah. these around. <laughs> so you can see why we need white oh, space, and, right? You guys get it? 
these well, political I mean, banners. I mean, to... these designers need a need a reward, man. I'm surprised how much information they're able to put in a single canvas. I swear to God. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know, right? Oh my God, and make it look so ugly as well. I mean, how I do know. you do that? How? <laughs> so, I I really like this one. I don't know why uh, they're supposed to make it look look bad, but I really like this one. <laughs> Which one? Uh, this rainbow one? I mean, it's yeah. cute. <laughs> it's, it's, it's cute. It's so cute. I think it's nice. Okay, so I'm going to get <laughs> back to my presentation. Yeah. yeah, so now you get why we need white space or negative space. Here are a few examples of where people have used, designers have used uh, the, the white space very intelligently. Uh, they've created a contrast and they've used some subliminal messaging. You can see a chicken leg in the kid's mouth and you can see bottles and a fork hair and you can see this um, vacuum cleaner blowing up the text of the newspaper. So this is how they've intelligently yeah. used their white space. Very impressive. Finally, we come to unity or harmony. Um, it tells how well your elements are being used and visual elements should have a clear l relationship with each other. And they should Firstly, and first and foremost, they should have a uh, balance in it. And then with balance, they should have a harmony. Harmony or unity, uh, tell, it, it's telling a story, basically. So let's move. The unity is going to tell you a story. So let's see. So they've used, uh, so in this visual, there is a pagoda. There are cherry blossoms. And there are there's a mount there's this Mount Fuji, and then you have a lilac sky. But everything is in perfect uh, correlation with each other and makes a great uh, picture, beautiful picture. And this is another example I'm using because you see all the ingredients in this picture, and they've come together to form a beautiful um, dish. Uh, pasta and noodles. Oh, I'm getting hungry now. Okay, so in <laughs> this one, you see pattern, you see dominance. Can anybody tell me what's dominating in this third visual? For me, if I were to tell you what's dominating, um, based on my hunger, um, I think her <laughs> wig, wig looks like an ice cream cone. You know how, how, okay. how it comes out? So, yeah. I mean, it does a bit. I mean, it, it does, does a, bit. a bit now you've said it, so. <laughs> so that's well, actually no, pretty well done. Let's ask people what do they say. So people are saying um, the cup, lip color, mug, yellow mug, the or her blue lipstick, the hairstyle. Okay. The shirt. How many people say the lips? Um. So it's Good. Michelle. Just one, two. Two, basically, and, the two people. And how many people yeah. say it's the shirt? Um, Hassan says it's the yeah. shirt. Faraz says yeah. it's the shirt. Faraz said it's, yeah. Well, I think um, it depends from person to person. <laughs> Yeah, color because it's the only thing which is not repeating in the whole visual because uh, the hair color are black and the sunglasses are black. These color uh, in her shirt are matching with the background colors and this mm. color is, almost looks like this color and the skirt color also matches with a uh, tint of white in the shirt. So I think it's the lip color which is not there. Uh, and which is not repeating. So for me, that's the dominating color. So whoever said the lip color, I'm well. Ilyas. <clears throat> Ilyas and Michelle and Rabia. Yeah. Good observation, guys. Good observation. <laughs> so you guys can say lip color now. All of you can say lip color now. So <laughs> <laughs> It was obviously okay, so the lip color. color. <laughs> <laughs> 
obvious. <laughs> like it's so <laughs> obvious. Oh my god. <laughs> like hello. But I'm still surprised, okay. man. Her hairstyle definitely looks like one of those McDonald's ice cream ones. It's pretty impressive. <laughs> I think I don't know what's going on after this. I don't think they order at this point. Yeah. <laughs> I think they do. They do. I know. So, okay. I think most of the pe- people in this uh, session will be ordering McDonald's afterwards because there's been so much food. So, here are a few examples of unity. Um, can anybody tell me what do they see in this second visual? Like, if there's something subliminal they see in the second visual? I feel like the hand. I mean, it's just, I don't know. I think it's there. the birds flying over the fields. That's pretty much it. <clears throat> so we're getting what the answers. People? Some people say it's yeah. the hand. Some people say it's birds, uh, fields, lots of lines, um, lots of of lines, cabbage yeah. or something. I like this answer. <laughs> birds <laughs> and <laughs> lines, <laughs> fields. Where's yeah, cabbage? Where's the cabbage? <laughs> cabbage has an observation that is beyond us. Like that is like godlike. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know. I mean, uh, it's hey. not even there. I love the imagination, <laughs> though. But, but the person saw it, you know? Somebody saw a ca- cabbage in here. So, you know, that, that <laughs> observation is beyond us. <laughs> yeah. So, um, what I'm trying to say that uh, all these visuals are in perfect harmony. They're telling a story. They're in unity. They're combining. And, you know, in this visual, you know, you're trying to connect the dots, a sense of that. I cannot see half of my uh, slide because this these thumbnails, but it's okay. Can you guys see my thumbnails as well? No, we can't. Yeah. Oh. I can. It's, it's right there. It's, it's probably your the entire thumbnail. presentation. Okay. So... Um, no, I need to see people. So, um, yeah, I think you guys pretty much get what harmony uh, or unity is. All your elements, uh, there's, uh, there's texture, there's, uh, there's line, there's um, movement, we went through movement, there's uh, balance, there, there's like everything, uh, there's balance. For more, most importantly, there's balance. So everything is per- in perfect alignment with each other, and your eye is not stuck to one point. And you get the message clear. You get the story, and that's why it uh, forms a perfect unity. What time more? Oh wow, we're at the end. We've done it. Ooh. Only 30 minutes. Wow. Only 30 minutes late. Wow. That's so good. That's, that's very Pakistani thing to do. So, I mean. <laughs> no, but we uh, started uh, on time. Yeah, we right? started a little mm-hmm. late. No, we started a little late because we were waiting for people to come that's on board. Good. So, it yeah. took around 10 minutes. Oh, okay. But good, good, Guys, good, good. If you have questions. Yeah, we did. I might not answer. Thank you. (laughs) Any questions you have? Panda needs to rest. Panda, there was there were a lot of questions uh, regarding your um, identity. Um, By identity, I mean the the mask which you're wearing. People want to know the story behind the mask. And they also want to know what, Mm. where did you get it? What's the inspiration? And of all the animals in the world, why did you choose a panda? And then, you know. Uh, Well, because everybody loves a panda and why I wanted to go with the mask. um, I'll quote Bane here from The Dark Knight. Nobody cared who I was until I put on the mask. (laughs) (laughs) My story is not that sad. I'm I'm, I'm not lived my life in darkness. Uh, <laughs> That's good uh, to know. It's actually, I just wanted to, you know, 
stay so, uh, a little private and anonymous. And I'm also inspired by Bansky, if you guys know who Bansky is. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. And pandas did are adorable. You, where, where, where did you get the mask? And, like, uh, are you also going to tell people that this ma you actually made this mask? It doesn't come like this. I actually made this mask. Uh, it came in form of a key line paper cardboard. Um, I'm not going to tell you where I got this from, but I think you guys can find it mm -hmm. online. But it won't be delivered now because Corona. <laughs> and even if you get it, you guys will have to make it. And you need patience and intelligence because the guidelines were written in another language uh the language of the bat eaters <laughs> but uh so yeah <laughs> so i had to you know um understand that language on my own and understand the instructions i just figured it out and made it pretty cool pretty cool i'm smart um but anybody okay guys can you before we, you know, before we end the session and after we're done with the questions, can everyone please turn on their videos and we can just appreciate the panda and give give her like a thumbs up or something? Wow. Because that'd be really nice. How many people do we have? Yeah. We have 31 people so far. And uh, most wow. of them left um, by ar around, I guess, 10 minutes ago. Oh, wow. They should have stuck around till the end to know about my uh, identity. Oh, they definitely Hello, will be Oh, yeah. Hi, Baha. I don't see you. Hi. <laughs> Who else do I know? Hello, Hello Nicholas. <laughs> All right, guys. Just, <laughs> um, I thought I'd let you know. Sorry, Amina, I'm just going to make an announcement. Um, just going to okay. tell these people that yeah. we uh, have a feedback form for all of you, which we will be sharing yeah. with you in the group shortly after. Um, we do have more workshops coming in. Um, some of them will be design related, while some of mm -hmm. them will be related to development and other topics. So if you guys are interested in in any certain topic, like I mentioned before, A plan, A for youth, where um, mm -hmm. digital workforce, so we've got a lot of people um, with us on our team who can devel deliver workshops like this. So if you guys want to have a similar workshop on any certain topic, uh, you guys can definitely let us know in the um, feedback form. And uh, we are also open to suggestions. So all of that will be in the feedback form because this, um, this is the first time which we've done something on this massive scale. There were a lot of people um initially it did yeah. went a little slow but um we would definitely love to hear from you about your feedback uh, regarding the the platform as well which is zoom um and then you know the presentation and you know if you've got anything against panda or the horse that is something personal uh, but anything else regarding the presentation and all i think you guys can uh, definitely <laughs> log it in in the feedback form and if you guys have any other questions we are also open guys i have to add something yeah Please. Yeah, Omena, I have to, I'm sorry for cutting you, but there is one, another announcement that we'll be having a workshop on web development uh, and web design within a week or so. So guys, stay tuned if you're interested in that. I want to That's uh, it from say my side. So, thank yeah. you to Nikhil because he's telling me that I did a good job. Thank you so much, Nikhil. I'm so I'm happy that yeah. you, you did a good job. I'm sorry I couldn't keep uh, a track of all the messages. Guys, yeah. Oh, Jess is telling me thank you. Thank you so much, Jess, for joining in and sticking <laughs> till the end. Wow, there are yeah. so many people. Yeah. All right, guys. Yeah. I think this is uh, time for us to sign out. Thank Hopefully, you, so you guys have an informative session. Um, and we will be sharing the feedback form with you um, in the group. And um, if there's anything else you'd like, you'd want to add, then it's fine. Otherwise, we are leaving in ten, nine, eight, seven. And if you guys six, want to know nine, anything else, I, <laughs> four, any three, other four, three, two. Bye. Bye. Bye bye guys. Thank you.
you so much for attending this session and making it so fantastic, guys. Guys, thank you so much for the session. As Rimsha said, we really enjoyed having you over. We hope that you guys made the most out of the information which was provided. And kudos to Panda for uh, delivering the entire thing in <laughs> took uh, around an hour and a half. We did, of course, this was our first time with handling such a big crowd, which was over 50 people. Um, it did take us a while to sort of figure out the nitty gritty stuff with the mic and all. But we did definitely feel that the entire session could have been made more engaging. Um, that is something where we lagged, um, which we obviously figured out while during the call, but we couldn't really handle it at that time. But rest assured, we've uh, now uh, taken note of this and whatever sessions which we will be launching next, we will make sure that it's as interactive as we claim it to be and that all your questions are answered appropriately and um, together because it's it's at a for youth it's all about the community it's all about us it's not about panda it's not about rimsha it's not about horse or umer it's about all of us so we hope that you guys uh, stick around for the next uh, session and definitely you guys will see an improvement and we will please fill out the um, feedback form and we will be going through all of inf all of the information that you guys provide and inshallah making all necessary improvements for the next session. Cheers, guys. You guys are awesome. Then from our side. Thank you. See you guys. Kudos.